answer fairly intellectually <sighs> do I want to do this week 22 is there such a thing as a twin flame soulmate or destined partner now this I can wrap my head around uh, I, well, I would say yes oh of course of course yes um, I've never heard it uh, put as like a twin flame but I like that idea Especially since my inner self is a fire element, but, um, soulmate, destined partner, there's two couples that instantly pop off the top of my head. One I didn't know as well, but their names are Louise and Francis. Louise was a friend of my grandma's, and they, I don't know how the hell long these people were married, centuries for all I know. and. Louise kind of passed away, and apparently, you know, where you found one, the other wasn't too far behind. That there was, there were just a couple that was like salt and pepper. You can't quite have one without the other. And then when Louise passed away, Francis died not too long, too much lo long afterwards. I think he may have had Alzheimer's or something, but I think since that chunk of you is like taken away, it depends how how quickly you can adjust to that. And some people just can't, where you, you, you know. And then you have my spare grandparents, Ken and Grace, who knew each other. Well, their parents knew each other, I think as adults, but the, the two mothers knew each other and were friends, and they would kind of stay, they were roommate off and on. Uh, Grace's mother, I think, lived up where we are. Ken's mother was down in Pennsylvania, not Pennsylvania, Rhode Island. I'm not quite sure how that worked, but they would get together every now and again, and of course, you know, Ken and Grace knew each other as kids. So you have like a picture of them when they're like five or six years old. And I don't, I can't remember if she said that Ken said like, you know, I'm going to marry you someday. <laughs> well, Cut to many years later, they're probably in their teens or twenties, I don't... Young adults, anyways. Well, she was dating this other guy. And, I guess, trying, you know, dating Ken, too. You know, he'd, he'd always make the excuse to come up, you know, supposedly to visit her brother James. <laughs> yeah. It was a good alibi. So her mother finally just goes, you know, pick one. <laughs> and she chose Ken. 70 years of marriage later, did it, was it over 70? 73. Well, they were married until she passed away after she had a stroke. That was... See, I have no sense of time, so it's like Ken just passed away in this previous November over Thanksgiving, and it was a year before that in the springtime. She passed away first from a stroke, and it was like the last words that she said to him, and it was on her birth, on his birthday. It's the last words she spoke were happy birthday. So, you know, that happened, and then she passed away. But we kind of distracted him where, you know, I would be there all the time. I was seeing, you know, at the uh, apartment, I think, more than I was here, and it wasn't like a chore, you know, it wasn't like, oh, I gotta deal with you, because I kind of was doing, like, his housework and stuff, and. Um, you know, and we were just hang out because we, we were much more our personality seems we're both loners and so when you share company with a loner you're pretty much just sharing space <laughs> and that's, you know, that's our interaction we, you know, relay information every now and again and it was fun, you know and we weren't quite sure after, you know, Grace had passed away and it wasn't sudden so I think he did have that sort of prep time and you know, how do you, it's like you, you'd have to know them. They were just, again, like salt and pepper day and night. You know, he, he wanted, 
And I think maybe being a loner personality does kind of help because you're inwards enough where you can kind of, you never quite fully grab. So when it's pulled, you, 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 there's more of you to kind of to retreat into. It's hard to explain. Loners might understand. But, you know, we did keep an eye on him. He did have, like, stuff to do, and we'd all kind of keep going. And I think he kept going for us. And then it just, we figure what had happened was I was there, and he was having stomach trouble. And it was, it got to the point where it's like, okay, we tried all your basic remedies, and he had, you know, hospice at that point because the hospital couldn't do much more for the pain and stuff like that. And he's 95 years old. So I called the troop over, and fortunately Kim had been out, his daughter, so everybody was there. And it just... He held, he held on for three days, and it was like, you know, we're all just sort of there. You know, we figured that he had a lot of aneurysms, and I, we figured an aneurysm just finally gave way. And he was pretty much a ticking time bomb anyways, but, you know, we kind of had that slow progression and you know I he's like you know, you know I might as well just you know do you know my Friday work what I do it's like no more than a few minutes later after I was like no wonder he was waiting for me to do my job <laughs> but it was like that kind of thing where it was like you knew we weren't quite sure even the people weren't like quite sure why is he still here you know what what's holding him back you know, Grace is there, because you... <laughs> and I'm pretty sure, because even, even after the fact, you could just feel her in your ear. It's like she had, she would chase this invisible speck of dust that only she could see. So it always made, made me paranoid, but he never, like, would yell at me if I didn't quite do enough job. It's like, well, if I'm not doing it, tell me, and I'll do it again, you know, don't think to me. Anywho. So, you know, I, so we're like, <laughs> maybe he's like, mm. I don't know, she's gonna complain at me, and it's just, if there's two people that were just a single or a dual flame, you know, it would be like Ken and Grace, and it, it's so hard to, like, explain, you know, and you know that they're, like, arguing up <laughs> in the afterlife, and she's probably busy, you know, fluffing the clouds, and it, it's hard to explain because you have to like meet these people you would know because it was never like okay well grace is doing this and you know ken's doing this it's always ken and grace you know when you have it's a single they're two different people but it's a single concept even after she had passed away it was still like going to ken and grace's you know it, it, when there's so much a unit I, I mean if you know these people you know these people that you you can't separate one from the other so yeah as a twin flame a soulmate a destined partner um recognition <laughs> you know yeah i mean it, it, i don't think it happens to everyone you know i mean some people might be more conscious of, I, I don't know it i think it's a rare thing and a special thing when it does and it was nice to kind of see that and be a part of that uh so if you if you do see like soul partners, you know, watch them, appreciate them. You know, there's something magical there, you know. So, uh, yeah. So I yeah, there definitely is. I think. Uh, it, I don't think it's something that you can like. Oh, this is my soulmate. You don't know shit. <laughs> you know, it's something that sort of happens to you. Again, elf quest recognition. I think that's pretty much how it works. Where it's like that. You can't go. Well, I feel like I'm this with this person. You, you can't consciously do that, I don't think. I think it just you fit together perfectly for that lucky. Most of us, you know, try, but, <laughs> you know. Uh, so, yeah, it's yes, it's a rare thing. Don't know how it happens, why it works for some and why it doesn't. I don't know. Thank you for watching this 10 million year ramble on <laughs> you know, is there such a thing as a twin flame soulmate destined partner? Thank you for watching, and blessed be.